can't even. Make see. sure you wear safety glasses whenever you're running the wet saw or the uh, grinder, because uh, we're talking about a high-speed uh, cutting wheel here and mm -hmm. fragments of tile flying. So protect your eyes. Mm -hmm. right, now you're gonna like this wet saw. It cuts really, really nice and clean with no dust. Turn it on. <laughs> Just that easy. Perfect cut. Polishes the edge. There's no sharp edge. Notice we have a drop cloth in here where we're going to be coming out with dripping tile. I got Yeah, we, we don't want to get our floor all ruined. We got a brand new tile floor, so we've got a, uh, a drop cloth to walk on. We've got our counters covered, and we're just uh, taking precautions so that we don't mess up anything while we're doing something. So. Yeah. We did cover our countertop with rosin paper. Which is a good idea, but I'm also going to be using a. These are just tricks of the trade. I'm also going to be using a, uh, these pieces of cardboard here that I have as extra padding protectors for wherever I'm putting down tools, mastic, whatever. It's like don't be pitching them. Uh, you'll, you're going to love them. A uh, three inch wide pattern on here. Just trying to pick up because you don't want to put down a, a whole lot more mastic than what you need. All right. You just spread that on there, and you let the let the trowel do the work. All right. Once you spread it on, you use the teeth in the trowel, the notches mm -hmm. in the trowel, to spread the thin set, and it leaves these little ridges. All right. Mm -hmm. And that also uh, takes off what it, what you don't need, and spreads only what you do need on there. All right. It pulls off the excess. You don't want to put globs of this on. It doesn't have to be a half of an inch thick. It should only be as thick as the notches in the trowel, yeah. which are three sixteenths of an inch thick. And that's that's the bed of mortar that you're putting on here, the bed of thin set that you're putting on here. Um, or actually mastic, not thin set. It's the, it's the bed of, in this case, mastic that you're putting on. You're so used to using thin set for floor tile application. Yeah, you can use thin set on these also. We just decided to go mastic uh, one, it, you got a little bit more uh, work time, move around time. Two, you only got to wait a day to grout in between mastic. Three, it wipes right off and washes off with a sponge. So I got a nice little field of uh, mastic started. These are going to go quick. That's why we took our faucet out there, by the way. Uh, try not to leave any misses, gaps, uh, whatever. Alrighty. Okay. And the first one that we had there was our cut tile. Basically. And ours is, just happens to be going right up against the door. Yeah. Your, yours may not be. I'm just going to go up a little bit higher, making sure I got mastic under every tile. So I know I got to go right to the bottom of the uh, outlet here. Okay. All right. Just push them in and give them a bump with the side of your hand. Boom, boom. Yeah. Just a couple taps, and that sets them in the thin set. Yeah. You don't want it actually gooking out through your through your tile. In the mastic. Yeah. Maybe I'll get it right here. So I think we can call it we can call it thin set a lot here. All right. So there's our first tile. We're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Right here, where you do got. Uh, double, you know, a double net. I might just put a little bit just for giggles and what's uh, where the two are going to come together. These tile kind of space themselves. Okay. Okay. And once you get them set and you like what you see, let it alone. Bump yeah. them in there with the palm of your hand. All right. Get them, get them to a nice, and you know, where they feel good. If you see anything falling or dropping, now's the time to go back, if you had to, and uh, put a spacer in. But these look pretty good. Wherever I just joined those two tile, which I couldn't even tell you, I guess is right about here. I'm just going to check it with a spacer. Looks good to me, and we'll go on to the next one. When you go on to, let's say I'm using this one here next. And that spacer just keeps us on our, on our mark. Yep. Uh, this is my next pattern here that's going to be going on, but I got this extra netting here. If it's me... 
I would be cutting that extra netting out of my way. That's why I got a nice three-quarter board here. Just a retractable utility blade yep. cuts that right off. I'm not cutting on a top of a piece of cardboard on top of a brand new counter. There we go. Uh, nice. Is the way I would be doing it. And as you see, that's the way I did it. One, once again, I got a double mesh spot there, you know, where I, I definitely want a little bit of mud to hit that one that's sticking out where I got some double mesh. So I'm just going to add just a, just a tad of masking. That way I know that one's definitely, you know, where I squeeze through the double mesh, I know I'm in there. Every place else I know I'm hitting. Flop them in. Let them sit right down on the counter. Yeah. Bump them in with your palm of your hand and then get one of your little spacers in between each of your... Uh... Yeah, you can see right there where I join them together. My spacers are tight. So I'm going to slide these over a tad. Like I said, just keep an eye on, uh, just keep an eye on everything. You can put a spacer wherever you need it. If, like I said, if you get too much mastic, uh, I can put them high and low. This mastic sets up kind of uh, quick. I can come back and pull them out as I need. Well, so you put three, three spacers there down the whole tile. Yeah, on this one, if I even need three. All right. Yeah, make sure your bottom ones are in nice. The rest of the stuff, washes off with uh, water. Like I said, I may, look, I may make this look a little easy, but uh, well, it, it is, really is, it is easy. It is easy. You're putting your, uh, yeah, just make sure you got plenty of glue down. Pay attention, you're not scratching your faucet and your counter. Uh, make sure you got it to the height of the tile that you need. Yeah, pay attention, you're not bumping your faucet like I just did, but that was just a hose. Right. This time I'll get some glue to the bottom part. I could be going, uh, if I want, I could be going upward, if I want. Yeah, the, not, the, the trowel has notches on the side and the front edge. Yeah. But uh, like like we said, you just the, the notches in the trowel make it so that you can only put on three sixteenths of an inch, uh, and yeah. it will pull off what it doesn't need. But you see, it leaves these ridges, and those ridges make a nice bed for the tile to sit in. So when you're bumping them with the palm of your hand, what you're doing is you're squishing your tile into those ridges for a nice even set. All right, cut out your excess mesh. Now, if you're using tiles that don't have mesh, now we're, again, we're using a tile that's on a mesh. Um, I love backsplash tile that's on the mesh. Uh, you could just be buying individual 3x3, three 4x4, by 6x6 three, by six by six tiles and doing them one at a time. Yeah. And if you are, then you're going to do the exact same thing. You're just not going to be working off of a sheet of mesh. But just imagine how long it would take to set all those little tiles, you know, 1x1s one and 2x2s two and 2x4s two and make it look that good. We did all that there in about two minutes, and if they were individual little tiles, it would have taken us about 15 minutes to get that far. And that's why uh, when you buy these tiles pre-packaged like this on the mesh with the pattern already started, uh, you save yourself a ton of time. All right, so easy so far, right, guys? I mean, this is... Uh, not the rocket science, or me and Tom would definitely not be qualified to do this. Well, maybe Tom would be. <laughs> no, Tom, I, are you a rocket scientist? I did not take up you rocket science. You didn't take, science, that, no, take had, that in college? I had astro... It, it, Astrophysics? No. <laughs> well, that's a form of it, isn't it? No. No? I was a ground equipment repairman, aerospace ground equipment repairman in the Air Force. Well, there you go. That's cool. But that had nothing to do with ceramic it tile. It doesn't, doesn't qualify you as no. a... Uh, as a brain surgeon then. Uh, right over here where I did get a little bit of mastic uh, in between my joint. I can either clean this out now or I can clean it out then. It don't matter. Yeah, but if you don't clean it out, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it you will. Out. It ain't coming out. Yeah, it, well, it, it comes out in a day, but you got to like work it out with a nail or something. Check your spaces. 
yeah, moving yeah. right along. And, and another reason that you don't want to put this on too thick is when you push these back, yeah. if you got it on too thick, it will squish out between the cracks, between the tiles, and you'll play hell getting that out of there. The only thing we want in these cracks is going to be our grout that we're going to be putting in here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, You do not want the thin set to be so thick on the wall that it squishes through these um, grout joints in the tile. So that's why we're using a 3 16th inch notch trowel and not some big honking quarter inch uh, notch trowel which would put on way too thick of a bed of thin set. Mm -hmm. They also make an eighth inch notch trowel as well which works well okay. too. But I think 3 16th is probably the biggest I would consider using for this application. With these little yeah, this little grout joints. Well. Yeah. Uh, so far so good. And I think we have plenty. <laughs> What's that? Plenty of wall mastic. I bought two of these. Yeah. Yeah. No, we do got two areas. All right. So uh, our first row, guys, is real easy because we're lucking out. We're we're below our switches and our outlets. Um, so we don't have any cuts except uh, we had to cut the first tile to get it to start against the door frame there. And when we get down here to the, into the corner, we'll have to make our, our cut on the end. Now we'll run this the whole way around three rows high first. One second here. Okay. We're going to show you how to uh, show you how to do one of these right here. Our first tile that we're going to be coming across here with. I'm just going to get a space, of a, you know, about our, our normal spacing. And I'm looking across at the bottom of our blue box, which puts me to here. The blue electrical box in yeah, the bottom? Yeah, the blue electrical box. Same thing on the side here. I'm going to find the side of the blue box, which is right here. And I'm transferring that to my tile. Okay. All right. What we do is we go ahead and we draw this out. This will be my first, this will be my first tile cut. Alright, Ed's going to take that onto the wet saw and cut that there and there. When he brings it back, it's going to look like that. Okay, now that I got it looking like that, these are decor line receptacles. Which means, uh, this is going to go this is going to go right there. So those metal ears go on top of the tile. Yes, they do. I'm going to space this down to where I got to go. Even though the metal ears go on top of the tile, I have to have this notched out for my screw to fit in. Wow. So now Ed's going to take that back out and actually notch that down into a V or etch out as much of that as possible so that I even have room for my outlet to fit in there. So yep, he's gonna take this out right here. He's gonna cut me out a big loop without breaking that tile.